recently on the 24th of August, SMU had their graduation ceremony which was held online and I actually was quite happy with that because right now I am living overseas in Finland and I'm very very far away from home and it was just nice to be able to see my batchmates and my friends on the little screen and it was really cute but because of that I really wanted to sit down and talk to you about my own university experience. I mean, now that I'm graduated and I'm officially out of SMU, I think it's the perfect time to look back on my four years and think about all the things I did wrong so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. So I suggest you get a cup of tea or coffee or a snack and we can sit down and have a little friendly chat and discussion about university and how university was for you or if you're someone who's about to go into university uh, if you have any opinions on your current expectations or what you are hoping to achieve when you finally get there so i've written down a lot of my thoughts in my journal but it's just so that i remember all the points i have to say so if i'm looking down please don't panic i'm just reading from my journal so to start off, the title of this video is Uni wasn't that great, and that's okay. So quite frankly, I'm not particularly proud or happy with what I have accomplished in university. And I say this quite matter-of-factly, I don't think like I'm a bad person because of that or anything, but I definitely feel very guilty when I reflect on the past four years of my life because sometimes it just feels like I haven't really accomplished anything and that my life isn't really going anywhere and you know So the spiral begins I struggled a lot emotionally and intellectually in law school which is you know generally a degree that is associated with certain stereotypes but like there's a lot of course material the courses are quite difficult the cohort is going to be very competitive and i have to say like to a very large degree a lot of those stereotypes are true i ended up graduating with very very average grades i don't think i did many outstanding things and it's not just the academic part i think about a lot of like the social part as well you know i feel like i didn't make as many friends as my peers i feel like i didn't you know become chummy with a law professor or anything like that because i know some of the people in my cohort who like work very closely with the professors and like they have like a very like friendly relationship and you know they text each other and da 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 yeah i don't have that um i am very close to my political science professor but unfortunately he's not from law school but i'm very thankful for him nonetheless so if i could summarize the overall struggle i have when it comes to like thinking about my university experience it can be boiled down to me struggling to separate a few things so the first thing is what i actually did accomplish in university the second thing is what i felt i accomplished in university because i think i tend to dismiss a lot of things that i do and the third thing is what i think people wanted me to accomplish in university so sometimes the lines between these three things get very blurred and that's why I always constantly feel like did I actually do anything? Did I actually do anything with my life? So now this is the main body of the video and I'm going to be explaining and talking about why university wasn't that great for me and I've come to find that the main reasons behind this are usually to do with big mistakes that I have made myself before coming to university. So these are things that you can actively, consciously prevent for yourself. Benefit of hindsight! So number one, I was not emotionally or mentally prepared for my degree. So I chose my degree quite haphazardly and it is very embarrassing to admit to people, you know, that I didn't really think my options through. I kind of got good grades for A-levels and suddenly the prospect of going into law school is on the table and instead of doing something that I was interested in or what I thought I was interested in at the time, 
I decided to go with law school because it was more practical, prestigious, etc, etc. Um, and I just went into it, got the offer, accepted it, didn't do much research about law school, didn't ask many seniors about it. And because of that, I went into law school with this super toxic mentality because I just felt like a total sellout. So my advice is that you should try to make as an informed decision as you can about the degree you're going to take and the school you're about to enter. If you have any seniors who have went to the university, please ask them for advice or like just talk to your friends about it because I don't remember talking to my friends that much about university applications. Maybe that was just me. So I was just doing that like unilaterally and making all these like very weird, uninformed decisions in my head based on how I felt at the time. And I feel like if I had done a bit more of the mental and emotional footwork before going into university, I would have definitely been in a better state to deal with everything. Because of course, university can be quite overwhelming. You are learning completely new things. You're meeting completely new people. So just be mentally prepared for that. I don't know what else to say. I also wasn't prepared for how competitive the cohort is. I, I, use air quotes because people aren't necessarily like explicitly competitive but this was the first time i was in a school where like most if not okay lah not all but most of the people came from like elite schools and these are people who have been academically outstanding their entire life and i was like quite a okay like i come from okay schools and i do like okay in those schools but like Honey, whoa, this was intense. So the next factor, of course, is comparing myself to literally everyone. So you know sometimes when you feel not so good about yourself, you'll compare yourself to other people and then maybe do some weird mental gymnastics to justify certain things to yourself. So for example, especially when I was younger, when someone was doing better than me in school or like some certain area of your life, you'll just be like, okay, so this person is good at A, but you know, they are not that good at B, but I'm good at B. So you know, overall it all really balances out. But the thing about law school and <laughs> the thing about university is that you're gonna meet people who are freaking perfect and amazing at every single thing. So obviously the disclaimer is, yeah, this is all based on like appearances, but honey, I'm just talking about my superficial comparison that I'm making in my head. So literally, comparisons that I would make to try to make myself feel better would now backfire on myself because I would just look at myself and be like, wow, I literally pale in comparison to this person in every aspect of my life, in terms of my looks, in terms of grades, in terms of accomplishments, in terms of friends, in terms of co-curriculars and talents, I don't know, like literally everything. It could be anything. And every time I thought about that, I would feel so discouraged and I will always feel so inferior to everyone around me. And this is obviously very, very unhealthy because sometimes these people I will compare myself to are friends, close friends, even friends who are like not so close but are still friends nonetheless who I care about very much. And that's just such a toxic mentality to have, to always have to be like competing in your head. And I think something that definitely has helped me rationalize and reconcile this um, is some advice given by my bestie, Naomi, who is very wise. And you don't think about it, but there might be other people out there who think the same about you. I'm not saying this to like be a narcissist, like, oh yeah, Shaleen, maybe there are people out there who actually look up to you. No, no, I'm not saying that. But when you think about that fact, think about whether that actually makes any difference to your life. Like if I told you that your friend, person A, actually feels very inferior to you. I highly doubt that it would make you feel better unless you're a messed up person. And in that case, you shouldn't be that person's friend. But it doesn't necessarily bring any benefit into your life. If anything, it probably makes you feel worse about yourself and how you are so powerless over how this person feels about you in relation to themselves. So I think when you think about it like that, it just tells you how this kind of comparison is so futile and it can only result in making yourself feel worse. So if you catch yourself doing that consistently or like thinking about your friends in this way or comparing yourself to your peers or other people in your cohort, I think you should recognize that thought pattern and try your best 
to think about things in a positive way because obviously you want to be happy for your friends and people around you and you don't want to be like this sad bitter person who always feels like oh yeah i'm not as good as my friends or the people around me so i would also compare myself to people who are not in my degree of study so i would look at my friends who went to do the courses that i would have wanted to do and i would always feel like damn they look so happy and they love what they're studying and for a lot of my friends like they were doing very well in these schools and i just felt like a complete sellout and not even like a good sellout because it's not like i sold myself off to go into law school and like became a super good law student so i just felt so horrible, like wow, I could have been so much happier if I went elsewhere. And I had this mentality for such a long time, I think up till year two or year three of law school. If you ask me, Charlene, do you regret coming to law school? I would just straight up say yes. But after a lot of reflection and soul searching and breakdowns, I've come to realize that I don't regret coming to law school. And even if I do, there's no point in doing so because I've already made my bed. I just need to lie in it. If you have chosen a degree of study or you have completed a degree of study that you, for whatever reason, regret, um, and it's just not practical for you to go back in time and like change your mind or change a degree or do another degree, I think the realistic and healthy thing to do is just to move on. You know, if you are a little bit of a hippy dippy person like me, you just have to believe that everything happens for a reason and the universe put you there for a reason. So even if you are very unhappy, you know, there are still so many things you can do to change your life and change your perspective. And now I can quite confidently say that I don't regret going to law school because even though I may have been happier in other fields of study, I have grown a lot from being in an environment that was not, you know, intuitively easy for me to adapt to. It pushed me out of my comfort zone. And because of that, I think, you know, I have learned so much about what I don't want, what I don't like, uh, the kind of people I want to surround myself with. And I probably wouldn't be able to deal with failure or emotional turmoil as well as I do now after going through law school. And the last reason I have for why university wasn't that great for me is that I would only think about all the bad parts about law school. I would think about how competitive it is. I would think about all the toxic people. I would think about, you know, the scary professors who are out there to like make you feel like shit. When I think about the law industry, I think about like the shitty hours and not having a life. And you know, you think about all these things, obviously uni is not gonna be great, right? <laughs> and I think that it's not unfair to say that there were many unpleasant things about university that were objectively unpleasant to anybody. I think I definitely focused a lot on only the bad things and the negative side of things, especially in year one and year two. When I first went into law school, I remember I would go home every day for like three, four weeks and just cry and just cry because I felt like law school was so scary and it was so bad and everything was like hopeless and I wasn't gonna be able to accomplish anything. And that doesn't help, you know, me crying every day doesn't help me do better at law school. <laughs> it just makes me feel even worse about myself and it makes me want to involve myself less in law school, which is the opposite of what you want to happen. So thankfully in year three and four, I managed to like get my emotional shit together and you know law school became a lot more enjoyable when you know you stop focusing on like the toxic environment and the competitiveness and you like just focus on yourself and your friends and like having a good time and you just focus on what you want to do and try not to think so much about what everyone else around you is doing so the first thing, which sounds a little bit cliche, is that your grades and intelligence should not define you or your self-worth. So after going to law school and being in such a like great obsessed environment, along with very academically inclined people, I can safely say that at this point in my life, I really don't care if people perceive me to be intelligent or you know if people think that my grades are not that great. Of course, I know that grades are important for practical reasons. If you want to 
get certain jobs or open certain doors but I think it is so dangerous and bad for you to attach your self-worth and confidence to something that is so tenuous and something that is so transient. So it, it's not just grades, but it's also, um, you know, whether people perceive you as intelligent and, you know, more conventional means of success. Like, oh, did you get this certain position or this certain amount of pay? Because it changes all the time. I feel like my grades were like, like that in law school. And I've seen so many people who have beaten themselves up for not getting good grades and I just feel like the grief is not worth it and it can really do a number on your mental health if you are doing this to yourself so please don't do it especially in university the second key takeaway is that things are always changing so how we do at university does not equal necessarily how we're gonna do later in life again this sounds so freaking cringy but Especially in law school, even if you are a very very good law student, you may not be that great of a law practitioner and vice versa. Or you may be good at both, or you may be bad at both. Who knows? You just have to go out there and try it. I have friends or people very close to me who have done very well their whole lives and then suddenly not doing so great in law school and then they feel like they can't do well in the future. But that's completely not true. I mean, there are people who have done you know, very average in primary school all the way up to JC and then are suddenly, you know, high performing law students. This lesson is not supposed to make you feel like, oh yeah, this person who is doing so well in law school now, they're gonna do really shitty later and then I'm gonna be on top. No, that's not what you're supposed to take away from this. What you're supposed to take away from this, again, is that things like grades and like how successful you look now can change so easily at any step of the way, at any point in time. And the only thing you can really do is to do your best, you know, have no expectations but very high hopes. I think this point for me is very heartening because, you know, in life there is a season for everything and how you do now doesn't necessarily mean that you will do the same way in the future. So we should never, of course, take things for granted or be complacent. But you should also remind yourself that if things are not looking great now, that they can always be better in the future. And the third big takeaway is don't be afraid to be different and unconventional. I definitely see myself as a very like weird or like unconventional law student. There's a very like stereotypical idea of what a law student should be like, which to me is, you know, very serious, very intellectual, very academically driven. And, you know, I definitely don't feel like those are my defining characteristics. Not that I think I'm stupid or anything. But anyway, I mean, obviously, aside from myself, there are also many people in my batch who are not afraid to, you know, be a little bit different. For example, me and my friend Randy started doing YouTube <laughs> in our last semester of law school, which is absolutely ridiculous, but we really love it. Um, there are people who do a lot of like cool performing art stuff. There's a guy who's super into triathlons, you know, just have a life outside of law school, have different passions, you know, university is not your entire life. Please don't make university your personality because it just is not good for you because you know what, university is gonna end, okay? So right now, I'm actually doing something that is considered quite unconventional, which is taking a gap year after law school and, you know, not doing the bar exam with the rest of my cohort. And I have to say that it is quite scary of course and i think it's really the first time in my entire life i have like strayed away from the conventional you know educational path or whatever so right now i am living in finland and i'm working in a field that is completely unrelated to law and i am very very happy and very secure in the decision that i've made for myself you know, if I had given in to the pressure of like wanting to stick to the conventional timeline or being with the rest of my cohort, I definitely think like I would have been giving up this amazing opportunity. And it's not like I don't want to do law. I do want to try practice. I do want to train with the firm that I have a TC with. And I think it's all about like keeping your mind open because referring back to point two, 
things can change at any time. I don't think it's good to like close yourself off or force yourself to take a certain path just because it is the easier or more practical thing to do. So who knows? I may love practice or I may leave practice in a few years, but I want to be mentally and emotionally ready for that to happen. And I can safely say like I have experienced so many different things and I can work in a completely different industry even with a law degree. So we've come to the end of the video. So this is the first time I'm doing a more like personal chit-chatting kind of video and please let me know what you think about it. If you've watched this far, thank you so much for watching this video. Please share your thoughts and comments. I would love to know and engage in some lively discussions in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye!